254. On Y254 updates, and tonight we get to talk about making lemonades out of lemons. Most of the times we find ourselves using this statement, but today we have Sharon Gogi, the author of the book that I have with me, Let's Make Lemonade, really bring this into actualization. You can be part of this conversation by talking to us across all our social media platforms, that is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Thank you very much, Sharon, for finding the time to be here. Thank this you. is, let me first say in the first start by saying, while I was reading this book, mm -hmm. I learned quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So I must really uh, acknowledge the work that you've put into really putting everything here. Number one, you've, you've decided to be very vulnerable. Yeah. You share, you've shared things that probably people would not have shared. Mm -hmm. But as we start this discussion tonight, we we have very many topics probably that you'd have chosen to really go for your book. Why did you choose a title, Let's Make Lemonade? Uh, the reason I chose that title in particular, at first it was supposed to be another title, mm -hmm. but I thought this book is basically a book where I get to speak about my journey as mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. Growing up, um, in the background I had, the struggles I faced, and I, I think every person goes through so many of the struggles. Every person is dealt at a fair share of lemons, but at the end of the day, the, the thing that you end up doing is to make lemonade out mm -hmm. of all those lemons that life throws at you. Mm -hmm. So actually, it just came to me as a popcorn answer. One day I was just asking God, like, what kind of topic would what kind of title would I have for that book and that came and I was like that's perfect because it's basically as you've read it's mm -hmm. basically about teaching people how to make lemonade out of all the lemons that life throws at them okay so yeah did you have any fears probably getting to share certain things you've talked about in the book how you had to deal with depression uh, sorry body shaming yeah. you've talked about how sometimes you didn't feel beautiful enough mm -hmm. you've talked about having a very difficult relationship with your mom mm -hmm. because there are certain things that you could not understand. Did you have fears to really open yourself to all these mm -hmm. while you were writing this book? I mean, the world is a cruel place. Mm -hmm. Every single day as I was writing that book, I kept asking myself, am I really ready to put my story out there? Mm -hmm. Am I ready for all that all that will come with it, like mm -hmm. the negative side, the neg negative criticism, the positive criticism. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure I was ready for that, mm -hmm. but there was this inner feeling that kept nudging me forward and just kept telling me, you know what, it's, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't speak about this, who else will do this? Mm -hmm. So it got to a point where I thought, so many people have done it before. I won't be the first one. There's mm -hmm. nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. So sharing my story, story sorry, would change someone's life out there. So okay. why should I keep it to myself? Mm -hmm. So every day as I was very, I was very scared of doing it. But the thing that kept me moving forward was the <laughs> fact that people have done it before and they're still fine. Mm -hmm. And once you share your story, you get to discover that many people go through the same thing you went through and they don't even know who they can speak to about that particular issue okay yes uh, you've talked about the struggles that you had with self-esteem mm -hmm. and I would like to quote on page three of your book there's mm -hmm. a point where you talk about you I began to realize that I had developed certain habits that mm -hmm. I hated about myself everyone knew me as a happy as a happy go lucky kind of girl who would laugh at anything like literally almost laughing at birds uh, mm -hmm. chirping and mosquitoes flying but at this same paragraph you get mm -hmm. to talk about how you dealt with things that people do not know because mm -hmm. all they can see mm -hmm. is a very happy person mm -hmm. which is something that happens in the light in the world that we live in today mm -hmm. we find people we meet someone along the streets they are all happy and all jovial but in mm -hmm. deep inside they're really struggling with something so how did you manage to deal to really bring yourself and build yourself and probably create a different perception for yourself um, further along in the book, you get to see a point where I was speaking about the victim mentality. Yeah. So for me, at this particular point, I didn't really understand exactly what was going on in my mind and in my heart. Mm -hmm. I just knew that sometimes I'm very happy, I'm laughing with everyone, um, that person who would, you know, the life of the party. Mm -hmm. But behind closed doors, there are certain things I was fighting that I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. So as I grew up, as the older I grew, I got to understand, I got to put a name on the issue I had. Mm -hmm. And I got to realize I probably am struggling with the victim mentality. And it's Basically, that point whereby you, you tend to feel like everything wrong is happening in your life. Mm -hmm. Like when something wrong is happening, you're always like, why is it always me? Why is it, why doesn't choose any, why doesn't it choose anyone else, you know? So the moment I got to discover and put a name on that issue is the moment I found my healing. Mm -hmm. Because I, ca I can't say I, I talked to a therapist. It wasn't a therapist. It mm -hmm. was all issues that I was facing on my own mm -hmm. that even my, my own mom didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So it was all a journey of discovery. It was all a journey of understanding, okay, fine, there's a name to this 
thing. And once you have a name to this particular issue you're facing, it becomes very easy for you to get a solution to it. <laughs> so once I understood this is victim mentality, then I was at the point whereby I wanted to find out how can I get past it. Mm -hmm. So after I, I found a, a solution for it and I discovered the first step towards healing is always acceptance. Mm -hmm. So for me, I can say the moment I realized, okay, fine, there's an issue I'm battling and this issue has a name. So once I, I was in that phase of acceptance, mm -hmm. I can say that's where my healing and my breakthrough came through. Okay. Yes. Uh, so in this book, Sharon gets to talk about how uh, she lost her father at a very young age, uh, the struggles of how probably in school she could see people have very nice relationships with their dads, uh, she could hear people talk about how their dads treat them and all that. And you've really talked about that and this is the one thing that really inspired you and pushed you to write this book. Mm -hmm. So. While growing up and being brought up by, by a single mother, how did it, uh, losing your dad, mm -hmm. um, sorry for that, how mm -hmm. did that impact you? How did that impact your life, some of the decisions that you were able to make? Mm -hmm. First, I, met, I must admit that uh, for a very long time as a young child, I didn't understand what losing a dad meant. Until I got to a point where I was in primary school and mm -hmm. I realized, actually, parents are bringing their children to school. I can see dads and their daughters. And I was wondering, okay, I have my mom and she's amazing, <laughs> but where did my dad go? So for very long, I, I never really even thought about it until that point where my friends would speak about their dads and how they, they love their dads. And then that's when I started asking my mom the hard question. So where is my dad? Where did I come from? Mm -hmm. So growing up without a dad has, has been a very interesting journey. It's been a journey, as I've said in the book, mm -hmm. of rebellion. Yeah. A point where I never understood exactly why my mom is so strict with me, why is she always in my case anytime I want to just leave a little. She's all about, you know, guarding me so self selfishly. Mm -hmm. Until that point when I realized that growing bringing a child up on your own is not an easy thing especially as a woman who is raising a daughter you see most of the time people say that my dad is my first love he <laughs> protects the daughter he's always ensuring that the daughters never lack anything but you see as a mom it was until that point i realized that um she's going through a lot on her own mm -hmm. for me to get to understand exactly my role in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was quite a journey. There were moments where we were best of friends, like everyone would ask us, hey, well, I'd like to have a relationship like the one you have with your mom. And there were moments where I never even wanted to see her. Because mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, can't she let me just live a little? Mm -hmm. All along, what she was doing was just out of love. She mm -hmm. was ensuring that I am protected, I am safe, and I, and I never lack, lack anything. But the younger you are, the less you understand mm -hmm. the struggles that she goes through. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been an interesting journey, but the older I get, the, the closer I get to her because I get to see the from her eyes you mm -hmm. understand I get yeah. to understand her and the struggles she's faced and why she was the way she was mm -hmm. and once I was past the rebellion stage me and her are best friends okay yeah. which is a very good um uh, process and yes. uh, time for you. Mm -hmm. uh, on page 38 of your book, you mm -hmm. get to say that at one point in my life, I felt as though she was a dictator. Mm -hmm. For people watching us tonight, her mm -hmm. single mother watching us tonight, mm -hmm. a young man, a young lady being brought up by a single mother, mm -hmm. how do you think mm -hmm. for you, because at this point now you are able to rebuild your relationship, mm -hmm. you and your mother have the best relationship yes. based on what he's written on your book mm -hmm. and also what you've gotten to share. Mm -hmm. What do you think people watching us tonight, and probably this could be the experience, mm -hmm. How can they now be able to build better relationships? Mm -hmm. How can there be better understanding mm -hmm. and for the child and the mother not to feel like one of them is being selfish? I think you've said it. It's all about understanding. Um, the moment you get to understand someone else's shoes, mm -hmm. the moment you get to understand where they, ca they are coming from, then I think everything will be solved. I think communication is the first solution to any problem we face in this world. That's mm -hmm. my strong belief. Mm -hmm. As long as you can be able to communicate your issues, like anytime you have an issue with your parent, anytime you have an issue with anyone it's all about you trying to make them understand your perspective and them and making you understand their perspective so mm -hmm. once you're at a level ground then everything will work out so for me the reason why we had that strange relationship was because I wanted her to understand where I'm coming from I wanted her to understand that I also get moments whereby I'm lonely mm -hmm. I get moments whereby I compare myself with other people mm -hmm. I get moments whereby I have low self-esteem mm -hmm. and she also wanted me to understand her journey as a single mom the struggles she's faced mm -hmm. and why she behaves the way she does mm -hmm. however we never had that common ground of understanding whereby we can speak out our problems mm -hmm. openly get vulnerable with each other mm -hmm. and share out exactly where we are the way we are mm -hmm. so as long as you do not have that level ground I think nothing will ever work out no none of your relationship will ever work out because every human being is selfish yeah. and every human being wants their own point of view of view to be understood mm -hmm. so I think that's the solution to be honest it's all about communication and understanding mm -hmm. as long as those two are out of the equation then there'll never be peace okay. in any of your 
relationships? Uh, so the bottom line here for those relationships mm -hmm. to become better is having being on the same crowd, mm -hmm. listening and probably even putting yourself in the shoes mm -hmm. uh, probably to try and experience what the other person is going through. Yes. So you've talked about body shaming, you've mm -hmm. talked about bullying. Mm -hmm. These are experiences that you talked, uh, you shared that you went through during your primary uh, education. Mm -hmm. So how did you, how are you able to literally uh, come through that? Because you know sometimes people don't often talk about body shaming. Mm -hmm. They'll just have certain things that you're dealing with mm -hmm. from the inside which could cause them damage mm -hmm. but for you how are you able to literally I mean, in the midst of all other challenges that mm -hmm. you are going through, how are you able to make sure that you came out of these victorious? I mean, to be honest, that's one of the darkest moments in my life. Uh, there's nothing as bad as being your own enemy. And struggling with self-esteem issues, struggling with body shaming issues, that's the moment you get to discover you have to be your greatest cheerleader. And for me, it, it was so bad for me because I was struggling with these things when I was so young. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even 50. I wasn't even a teenager yet. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine when other kids are teasing you because of your body. They're saying how fat you are. Mm -hmm. They're calling you all sorts of names. The way it can get to a child. As a child, you're supposed to be this happy-go-lucky person. But at the end of the day, every time you get back home, all you can tell your parents is, you know what, uh, this so-and-so said this about me and I'm feeling so sad. So for me, to be honest, where I got to get past this point was when I realized, you know, all of us are struggling with something that we don't even speak about yeah like you look at a person and you'll think their life is going perfectly but when they speak to you about the struggles they're facing the way they don't like their nose mm -hmm. the way they don't like their legs yeah. I mean, every single person has a certain body part that don't they don't like mm -hmm. about themselves mm -hmm. so for me the moment i got to realize that you know what these people who are body shaming me these people who are bullying me it's because it's coming from a point of insecurity from in themselves their yeah heart, in their own in their own life mm -hmm. so that moment made me understand you know what anytime someone would call me names i'd be like that's your own problem to deal with that's not my problem mm -hmm. so if you think i'm fat then i'm sorry because that's your own issue mm -hmm. if you think i'm this if you think i'm too tall if you think i'm too short it's not about me it's mm -hmm. about you so it means it's something that you should work on before you start bring it bringing it out on everyone else okay so that's my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. As long as I understood that, you know what, we all struggle, struggle with this body, shape, body shaming issues. We all have a body part that we don't like. Mm -hmm. And we all have certain issues that nobody else knows about. Okay. So that made me understand, anytime anyone is talking badly at you, anytime anyone is calling you names, it's not about you. It's about them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have around five minutes left. Mm -hmm. The turning point mm -hmm. from your book. Mm -hmm. Your turning point was when you gave your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to tell us very briefly, mm -hmm. How did this now change your perception about how you viewed life, about how you viewed challenges? How did now giving your life to Christ, which you talk about as your turning point, really impact now every challenge that you were dealing with? Okay. So for me, one of my favorite Bible verses is Psalms chapter 46 verse 5. And it says, if God is within her, she will not fall. Mm -hmm. He will help her at the break of day. I think that Bible verse encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. As long as you have God within you, as, as long as God is on your side, you will always believe in yourself. Because in his word, there are so many promises of how he loves you, how he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. No matter what you go through, he's always on your side. Mm -hmm. So for me, as long as I understood the kind of love he has for me, even the struggle I had with not having a, an earthly father mm -hmm. slowly started to fade away. There are moments where I asked God, I wish I had that kind of fatherly love from an earthly father. Mm -hmm. But the moment I understood the kind of love he has for me, everything changed. The moment I understood the way he loves me, the way when he's on my side, I can never fail. Mm -hmm. Everything changed. So for me, that's what I would say. As long as you, God is on your side, as long as God is on your team, then you're always on the winning team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as we now come to the end of this discussion, mm -hmm. when you were writing this book, I'm sure there were, there were a lot of emotions and all that. But I'm also sure that there's something that you were able to learn about yourself. Mm -hmm. So that, what is that one thing that you really learned about yourself during this journey as you were writing this book? And you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I didn't know Sharon could do that. But mm -hmm. now because of this experience, mm -hmm. I really know. There are actually three things. Resilience, mm -hmm. and no matter what life thro throws at you, you can make something out of yourself. So no matter, whatever it is you you, are, you have in your heart, whatever talent you have, as long as you're resilient, you can make it. The other thing was ambition. I mm -hmm. realized that I am a very ambitious young girl. Like, mm -hmm. I knew this since way back, but writing this book just reminded me that no matter what, keep following your dreams, keep chasing your dreams, and at the end of the day, you're, you're going to be able to make it through. Mm -hmm. Yes. But in shots to young people watching us tonight? i just tell you, keep moving. If you can't run, walk fast. If you can't walk fast, 
crawl. If you can't crawl, do whatever. But at the end of the day, just keep moving. Okay. Yeah. So you've heard what Sharon has said, and this is the book. As Sharon tells us, probably where we can get this book. Uh, for someone who's watching us tonight and they would like probably to experience what I have, mm -hmm. where can they get this book? At the moment, I'm doing send copies, so mm -hmm. you can order it from my social media pages mm -hmm. uh, at Sharon Googie. Mm -hmm. or you can DM me. You can send me a comment on my YouTube channel, Sharon Googie, and I can uh, I can organize how you can get that book. Okay. Thank you very much, Sharon, for really finding the time to come here and talk about this. I hope there's going to be probably a volume two or, a vol or another book on another experience that is going to uh, give the much insight that I was able to get from this book. If you're watching us tonight, you've heard from Sharon, every lemon that is thrown at you, make lemonades out of that. And you're also going probably, you may not be able to fight things probably in a way that you really want to but there's always a beginning to something and there's always an end to something thank you very much for joining us tonight my name is patricia morioki two of yourselves a very good night